So we're rejoining the, um, this is the part three, I think, of doing the bellows for the organ that's going in the new private chapel here at Tango Towers. So what, where we left it, we'd got all the old leather on the bellows and I've been busy with my assistant in steaming that off. We use a wallpaper steamer with just the hose and that's now in that bucket. I'm sure Mr. Chippy will enjoy burning that. So what we're now left with, you'll see on the, we're using the bellows well as a, ba as, a um, as a bench to be honest at the moment and we'll carry on doing so until we actually need to start re-leathering that bit of the bellows. So this leaves us, having removed the leather, this leaves us with eight sets of ribs and I've left the centre hinge on so I don't get myself muddled up. Now they've done these in leather but my training is to do that in webbing and the webbing isn't cheap, I think it's about £26 plus about a roll. Um, so it's this stuff which is quite hefty and the idea is that whereas they've done the leather we will be gluing the webbing to the inner. Now, I think that's a stronger job but obviously Forsh and Andrews didn't and that's entirely we have different ideas don't we. So um, that's going to get screwed down to that board and what we need to do and I'll just move the camera what we're going to do is we're going to screw this down with a one eighth of an inch gap in between and that one eighth of an inch gap uh, it can just be some matchsticks I think they're going to be about one eighth of an inch it's just so that this is going to be able to open and, and close uh, without it, uh, it rubbing so that's going to get done on the inside on all the eight ribs then when we've done that we can glue them accordingly to either the base, the floating fl flame, can't even speak, and the top. We've got to cut holes in the top. And as I said before, we've got to do that so we can um, leather it without having about 12 men holding it, because we haven't got 12 men. The other thing I came across is, and last time I did one of these was for our, um, no, I've only done four in my life, believe it or not. And, um, the last one we did, I made a brand new bellows for somebody. It wasn't quite as big as this and it was only single rise. Then when we did our conica organ, uh, the finished one in the workshop, which is still here, because it's useful practice instruments, it's quite hard to play. Uh, we did the bellows on that and I've done another one here. Obviously I did one or two in my, in my training when I was with Groves Organ Builders at Nottingham for that apprenticeship time. Now if I go over here, I dug out this scan from one of the older books and this goes into making bellows. I showed you the other book I found the further one and uh, again this is useful um, material to have and it's easier working from a scan which you've printed off A4 and spiral bound than it is from a genuine book from the 1890s. So you see everything's been cleaned as far as the bellows well goes and we'll next join this uh, video when we start gluing that into position with these screwed down and the eighth gap in between. So what you can hear apart from the background music system which is now on Christmas stuff uh, is the um, we've got a Burko uh, water boiler so you can see that one, that first pair of ribs, which is one of the shorter ones, is actually now screwed to that piece of timber. So there's a one inch, start again. There's a one, and one eighth of an inch gap, screwed to the piece of timber. And the idea, this has all been cleaned off from where it had the leather before. We're doing it with the uh, webbing, because that's my training and that's how I do it. I think it's stronger, but the other one lasts 150 years. So we're going to use hot animal glue.
which is in here we have an electrically heated one of these we do have some water jacket ones as well I'm going to work with this quickly because it's only about seven degrees not ideal down, quickly apply the tape and then a bit of bone rubber which is this tool here I'll just get some water out of the Virgo boiler put that in the hot water we need to rub this into the glue So that's our first hinge. So I'll get another piece of wood, we'll do the next one. Whilst I'm waiting for the steamer, just so I can take the centre leather off this uh, next rib, which I'm going to do. And you'll see in the background, I went over the other, I uh, went over that again with the glue. Um, Scotch pearl glue stings awful, of course, with it being an animal product. Um, it's like, it comes like that, and I have that. Um, water glass in there just so we can put it into the double jacket glue pot. So I'll just show you that. I kept one of the leathers on these so that I didn't have the, although I've numbered all these, I didn't want to end up with getting them muddled up if you can understand that. So we've got two boards on the go, I'm going to do one short rib, one long rib per day. So by the time you've set up and you've actually done a couple, it's probably taken about an hour and a quarter. But because I do other things as well with the electronics work and so on, we can you know, fit this in, fit the other work in and so on. If I had to do a bellows in a week, and when I did my apprenticeship with Groves, we did have to do a bellows in a week. You know, you're starting to have to buy in timber to screw these two, and and then just wait a couple of hours for it to dry enough, and then fold, turn it over, and do the leather. So it's not ideal, and I do prefer to take my time. But we've probably been on this six weeks, but there's other things to do. The building's not finished, but I wanted to get this underway because it'd be nothing worse than having the building finished, ready for the organ to go in and we haven't even started the bellows because to be honest um, stripping it down is uh, certainly a third of the work so i've just got a wallpaper type steam generator here and what we're just going to do is just to go over this uh, which is now chucking water out as it comes up to the boil there's just some bits of leather there which i just need to steam off And this is why we're using this type of glue, because when this organ needs another overhaul, 
be that 75 years or another 150 years, then it will need steaming off again. So if I was to use some modern kind, kind of adhesive, which isn't going to actually work any better, but maybe more difficult to get off in the future, Make sure there's no bits on there. No assistant today, so just me. Just go over that with a hot cloth. And once again we'll screw this one down to this board. Cordless drill, there's a modern item. When I did my apprenticeship with um, Alvin Groves, we weren't allowed to use any power tools, which I thought was absolutely bizarre. I accept you need to know how to use hand tools, but he didn't use power tools for anything. There was one 1930s electric drill in the building. And there were so many ways you could save such a lot of time and still be doing the job properly. He wasn't that old when I joined the firm. He'd have been... Um, uh, what would I be? Uh, well, I'd have joined probably 1980. Um, so, he'd be what? 30, 1930, 40, 50, 60, 70. He'd actually only be about, I think he'd only be about 55, 57, that kind of age. So, you know, Probably a little, little tiny bit younger than myself, but um, he was very old fashioned in that way. He'd done his training with um, with Willis, and it was a government retraining scheme he'd been on because uh, of the war. I mean, he, he'd been working as a warehouseman before the war, and then he was working as a radio operator in the Navy. And then he did a retraining thing for uh, organ building. Now you know what I'm doing here, don't you? Um, am I doing this the right way on? I'm not, am I? It needs to be... It needs to be... The, this needs to be on the inside. There, I'm talking to you and you've put me off. Once again, we'll run over this one with a hot cloth. So it's going to be this red, it looks like red lead paint, which it probably is, but it's um, more likely to be 
mix with glue, a very weak glue, uh, to fill any possible gaps, in which case it's then called size. Right, we'll screw it down again, but the right way up this time. There's already screw holes from when they manufactured this, so I'm just having to screw it into the piece of timber that we're using. So we want our three millimeter gap. Well, we were going to leave the video at that and the battery ran out on the camcorder because that, before I could kind of sign off and finish what we were doing. So yesterday's two, I've now taken off the boards and as you will see, they will fold, which is what the idea is, because they go that way. So that's going to be the outside, which is the stained side of the wood. And of course the red is the inside. So it's very flexible, you know, you've seen me glue this stuff, but it's very flexible. So, we, we waited for the water boiler to uh, boil. There's not much electricity out here and I have to uh, plug things in one at a time. So, we've now cleaned off both the others, I've removed the centre things, um, strips that uh, were there before. Just want to run over with a hot damp cloth and just make sure we've got uh, little bits and bobs missing. Uh, I'll show you, I'll tell you what, while that's boil about boiling, yeah, it's not quite hot enough. I'll tell you what, I'll show you where we are with the, with the building. Let's just check this old water out. Here, you know, I'll see whether that's warm enough or whether it's going to be a, a different part of the video first. Yeah, it's warm enough to do that. Let's show you I brought a sponge out of the kitchen, a new one. Uh, I should have really had one yesterday. It does help with rubbing down that, uh, well, whether we're doing what, uh, the webbing or whether we're doing leather, it does help. Good. So we'll get those screwed down. What I'll just do before I screw those down, we'll just take the camcorder, I'll just put it handheld and well, no we won't, we'll leave it on the tripod. Um, I'm going to go, we'll go and have a look at the new building. It's, uh, you'll see where we are with it. At least we've got the lights on there now. Right, so at least we've got some lights on here. Hello, it echoes in here. Um, so I've got to do my best Vickers voice. Uh, we've, um, as you can see, we've got a scaffold tower there because they're going to be doing, I'll just move the camera up on its tripod. They'll be doing the uh, insulation and the ceiling uh, this week. 
So they wanted a second scaffold tie, and I says, well, I don't need to hire one, it's cheaper to buy another one and then sell it off at the end. So that's where the scaffold tower is, more or less where the organ's going to be, because it's going to be up against that wall, and of course it'll take about a third of this building up. So uh, we've had the electrics done, if I wander over there, that was the back door of the organ workshop, which of course will get uh, cleaned up and painted. So hiding behind it, we've got the consumer unit there, the one and only socket, and we've got one of those big switches with a handle. I love those big switches with a handle. <laughs> it's probably going to draw about 550 watts, but I still like big switches with a handle. So that's what we're, we're having for the, where the organ is connected. So we'll just go around and see the back. The new scaffold tower is stuck there, the secondary one. Um, that chair belongs to Mark. M7, uh, G7 NDJ. So uh, that's where we are with the building. And then we've got double doors into the building. Oh, he says you've got glass doors as the builder. So I said, yeah, I'm not doing anything I shouldn't be in here. <laughs> right, so that's where we are. Let's see whether that water boiler's boiled. Right, we'll do the next strip. work very quickly with it being hot and quite cold in the building. Not much I can do about that. We're using the hot sponge this time, which also helps. And then what you didn't see on the last one, although it was shown in the distance, with, I'm running over with the glue on the inside. Again, we'll run over it with that rubber. Right, that's that one done. Put that over there. And there's the next one. So, cut myself off a piece with Mr. Chippy's knife. He doesn't know I've got this. This is the shorter one of the two. I appreciate there are people who do these with PVA adhesive, but that's not me.
sponge. As hot as you can hold it. And we'll run it over with the glue again. So that's the four which fold this way. So the other four, there could be leather on this fold. And that has to be paired at the edges, otherwise known as skiving. I would think that skiving was the only sit down job in a leather shop. And so I would think that's where the other use of the word skiving comes from. Somebody who's not probably pulling their weight as much as uh, other workers because it's going to be a sit down job where everything else in a leather workshop would have been standing up. Doesn't like going that way does it? do. So we've got both done. So next time I show you this the ribs will be being assembled into the floating frame and we'll probably be doing the gussets. I took one of the gussets off very carefully so I don't have to make a paper pattern. We've got exactly how it should be which is going to save some time. This is half strain sheepskin leather, leather we're going to be putting on and then at the gussets we'll be using gusset leather. Right so I hope you've kind of enjoyed uh, the next part in this video. This is part three isn't it? Of, the French would say beaucoup wouldn't they? Beaucoup. I can't spe speak French but you know that kind of word and so we're going to have quite a lot of parts to this. I know it's nothing to do with two-way radio but some of you said you do find it interesting and you will find it fascinating at how these things work. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on the next part when we get a bit more of it back together.